We go. Precursor to our discussion, NUSPAS is a multinational media giant with stakes in internet businesses in emerging markets, pay TV and print media. The group's most significant assets are 35% of Chinese internet company Tencent and wholly owned DSTV multi-choice in Africa. NUSPAS has a market cap of 265.6 billion rand, a price to earnings ratio of 44.6 and a dividend yield of 0.5%. Well, this one, uh, there's no stopping it on share price at the moment. Looks as though it's spiked again there, Paul. Mm. Yeah, it had a little bit of pullback from the 600 mark into the 580 region, but it's blown up higher now, sort of 630 and beyond. So these are all-time highs, but clearly it's on the back of growing subscriber numbers from multi-choice, now at around 5.5 million African homes, of which about 4 million are here in South Africa, and the rest is elsewhere. Our signal, CNBC Africa, you're watching tonight, is obviously part of that bouquet. And the growth has been in the compact area. But then in addition to that, of course, is all these worldwide internet assets that Chris Beck and his team have built up. Chris, in terms of the media landscape, is this your sure bet from an investment perspective? I don't know if it's your sure bet. I mean, it's, it's certainly our sure bet. I mean, we, we've punted this one, and we have it in front of our, uh, as, as far as our clients are concerned. We've had it as a core holding for many years and, and, and continue to do so. Um, look, nothing's a sure bet, and it's, 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 it's a rather expensive holding, let, let's face it. I mean, 44, 45 PE. But I, is it going to get any cheaper? I very much doubt it. And I think uh, perhaps one of the things that Paul didn't mention here is the huge degree of innovation, the far-sightedness of this company. A lot of people forget, for example, that this is the company that started off MTN, you know, M-Cell, back in the old days. I mean, their ability to spot opportunities and go for them in a full-blooded manner, it's, it's, just, it's almost unparalleled. So, I mean, I can hardly speak uh, highly enough of this operation, but it's, it's not a cheap one. Are those opportunities all down to Chris Becker's good business instinct? <coughs> Yeah, I think that's got a lot to do with it. I mean, he is really an internet visionary. Uh, he's seen the opportunity, I think, to go out into countries. Their most recent deal last week was to buy a big stake in an e-commerce venture in Nigeria. But prior to that, of course, buying the stake in Tencent was massively important because China, as you know, they don't allow the Western mainstream internet companies in. So those companies have done well. And Chinese people are quite keen on instant messaging, little games, gambling, and so on. So that's where Tencent makes its money from. That stake alone is worth just about all of the market cap of this company. But they've got similar businesses like that in Russia, in Eastern Europe, in Turkey, in India, in Brazil, and all over the show. Well, we spend a lot of time discussing the Tencent element of this group and whether it is overvalued. Of course, that is the big debate point, and the market doesn't appear to think so, considering how well the share price is doing. Yeah, I mean, we were having this debate five years ago, and uh, we thought it was overvalued. Well, we didn't think it was overvalued, but certain people thought it was overvalued. And those people. And they've been proved wrong. Proved wrong. And they, pr they probably still think it's overvalued. I mean, we're talking about, Paul, correct me if I'm wrong, what, seven, eight hundred million subscribers or, or thereabouts of Tencent? I mean, it really is, it just, it just defies belief. And we sometimes struggle to get our minds around just how big Tencent really is. But bear in mind, it's operating in, a, in, in, in the world's most populous country. So, uh, really, it's, it's, it's quite a phenomenal operation. Given how expensive mm. it is, would you deploy new money? <coughs> yes, I would. I mean, I think the point here is that this is the preeminent investment vehicle for emerging market internet businesses. So we know in the US you can buy Google and you can buy Amazon and you can buy eBay and Yahoo and whatever it is that you fancy. In emerging markets this is the one single entry point. I don't know where it's going to go. You know there's this funny thing with this two layer of control structure that NASPERS has. It's got N shares and then A shares. The A shares are controlled by the sort of Cape Mafia and it's not clear how that's going to evolve. But, I but think is it a cause for concern? Well, I don't know for sure. I mean, I'm not generally in favor of companies that have secret agreements that prevent it from hostile takeover. But I think being as sort of open to shareholder advance as Quizbeck is, he's more likely to promote some sort of evolution of the group in years to come. And as we always say on the show, don't bet against the Stellenbosch Mafia. Do you agree with those sentiments? Oh, totally. <laughs> Look, I mean, uh, I, I can remember going back... At least back we've established that. Yeah, I, I can remember going back 20 odd years ago, but even before the, the electronic assets, you know, when this is largely a publishing company, before it was even listed, then there was a very, very active market on the, on the, on the, the over-the-counter market. Um, and, you know, it's not just Kurs Becker. There's incredible strength and depth across this entire group. So you, you, you really don't want to bet against this one at all. Hot or not, Paul? 
Yeah, I am still hot on it. I think, as I say, it's got some restructuring potential. I think long term, they do have to watch that internet doesn't start to supplant some of their DSTV multi-choice strength. But, you know, the bandwidth in this continent is still so pitifully poor. I almost said something else. That <laughs> it's going to take a while. I was very worried about it was going to come out of your mouth right So now. I'm hot on it, yes. You're hot. hot. Good, let's just stop while you're ahead. <laughs> hot or not, Chris? I agree with Paul. I mean, I think the chances of anything significant happening on the broadband front here are, are, are very slim. So, yes, I think it's, uh, it's, it's hot.